Flat Track Factory. This is a third video in a series about how to start racing. Part one was overcoming the hurdles to get to the track for the first time. Part two was what to do when you get to the track and how the day will go. And this is part three will be the riders meeting or a riders meeting. It's not the perfect riders meeting. It's not exactly the riders meeting that you're going to see when you're at your first race, but broadly similar and specific organizations will have more or less details and more or less rules. And uh, I have my glasses on now, so that means that uh, I'm smart and this should be a good video. Let's see. All right, so uh, welcome to the race. And they'll talk a little bit about the organization and then uh, may encourage you uh, how to do things the way they like them to make the event go better. This uh, may be particular and seem picky, but uh, they're ultimately trying to provide a great event for you. So if they want you to sign up online, sign up online. If they want you to mail it in ahead of time, mail it in ahead of time. Uh, these types of organization stuff that happens ahead of time makes the day uh, typically go, go quicker for you in the future. They'll talk about practice orders and uh, where that will be posted. So keep an eye on that. Sometimes the practice order and the race order are the same. Sometimes they're different. So get ready to write that down. Maybe they'll give you a copy or take a picture of it now that we all have smartphones. Um, they'll talk about uh, the actual practice procedures, about how to go out. Uh, there's large classes, they may split them in half or thirds, uh, other things like that. They'll talk about um, taking the checkered flag or the red flag, however they're gonna end practice and scooting around finishing out the lap so we you know we can get to the evening quicker if everybody lifts on a big track and you're poking along half speed it just drags the night out they'll talk about uh, uh, putting a foot out you can see my foot or raising a hand when you're uh, done when you're coming off the pace before you lift on the throttle uh, many race directors will tell you to always assume someone is right behind you and you should indicate to them with a raised hand or a foot off before you roll out of the throttle and that uh, prevents a lot of miscommunications where there's a racing incident and somebody says, you know, I didn't, I didn't realize they were going to lift. So raising your hand, uh, even when it's obvious uh, you saw the checkered flag, just go ahead and raise your hand. And that's a, a nice way to indicate to people. The start procedure, they'll go over the starting line procedure, probably from staging to proceeding to the line to the green light or green flag. Uh, pay particular attention to that. They may have um, people from staging and the actual starter or the lineup person, those could be three different people, to come up and talk to you about how that will go. In the last video, you may remember I talked about watching this procedure once the heat races start to get a sense of what it really looks like, who does what, where they stand, who they're pointing to, and the rhythm of this sort of thing. After a while, you'll sort of get a sense of it, but uh, if you haven't seen it before, it can be really informative to uh, listen to how they're going to do it and then watch it when they're actually doing it. Um, there's some standard rules in racing, uh, uh, flags, what they mean. They'll go over that. Um, I'll put up here now a link to uh, a Wikipedia page discussing the flags. Basically, this is what, what flags uh, look like and what they mean. Um, some of these are more road racing based, but you'll have the green, yellow, red, white, checkered, maybe a blue flag. And they'll talk about waving yellows versus standing yellows and where the flag people will be. Typically they'll have somebody at the flag stand or on the ground on the inside of the front straightaway on the starting line with a set of flags and then somebody going into one and someone going into three on the inside of the track uh, where you will look. Some facilities have lights, um, cart or car tracks that we race at will often use lights and you can see where those will be, how those will, will be displayed, under what circumstances they'll be displayed. Motorcycle racing almost universally races under the yellow I just wanted to take a moment to interrupt myself and point out that something like racing under the yellow and the different stations and a yellow displayed here means we can't race 
from there till we get to the incident, then we can race after. All of these things are, are not very well explained in a YouTube video. This is really just for information to whet the appetite, get you excited, give you a little background, and uh, get you tuned in to clue in and focus on the riders meeting. And if any of this is unclear, the time to get a better understanding of that is not in front of YouTube, but is uh, at the facility, at the racetrack, with the officials in front of you. So I just wanted to clarify that. Back to me. So that's different from car racing. If you see a yellow flag, a standing yellow may mean a slightly lower level of uh, incident and a waving yellow typically will mean uh, a more important type of incident to be aware of. But after the yellow flag, you are allowed to go back to racing until you come back to the incident. So um, this is very important to listen to the, the riders meeting. Different uh, flaggers and different flagmen and different organizations have uh, maybe a slightly different way of doing it. It's always good to refresh your memory on this. If you see a red flag, this is when we would raise our hand, come off the pace and stop. Typically you'll be directed to an area where you are supposed to congregate. Typically it is not the grid. It's maybe on the outside of turn four on the racing surface. And you'll either be told to circle around the track or go backwards. Um, just be aware that when you have a red flag, the person right behind you is racing you for position may not see it. So we raise our hand before we lift or put our, our right leg or whatever out to indicate we're coming off the pace, then you'll be directed to the area for congregation during the red flag. And uh, you may be told to go backwards on the racetrack. Generally, that's the only time you ever go backwards on a racetrack is when directed by an official. Otherwise, we always go in the direction of race travel on the racetrack. So that's flags for you. Also, you may have a section of the riders meeting talking about perhaps disagreements with officials, particularly on the starting line. It would not be uncommon to be told that uh, if you have a disagreement with what you think happened on the starting line, where you should go, where you should start, whether you jumped or whether you, you should not, uh, that uh, while race engines are running and bikes are on the track, that is not the time to debate that or plead your case, you simply do what you are told immediately. And this is the nature of racing. Maybe they got it wrong, most of the time they don't, but uh, we all try to uh, have very good sportsmanship and display that to others and uh, respect our officials. They're, they're again, probably not being paid anyway and are just trying to put on a good event and aren't really there on the power trip. So we certainly hope not anyway. So we're going to take their directions immediately. Uh, take your lumps if you don't think you did it. You probably did. Uh, and if you didn't, you probably got away with it some other time and you didn't get caught. So to take your lumps, uh, take the, your assigned spot, your penalty spot, and uh, you know, make it up next time. So uh, no arguing with the officials. You may be um, sanctioned, uh, penalized further, or invited to go uh, spend the rest of your evening somewhere else besides the racetrack. And that's not, that's not fun. So, um, let's see, numbers. Uh, I always invite someone, uh, a new racer, when they're thinking about putting fun, goofy, super original, artistic numbers on their motorcycle to come down into the infield and stand with the scorers. Many races are scored manually uh, even if you have transponders, the, maybe a manual backup, come down with the scoring people and watch motorcycles come by at 60, 70, 80, 90 miles an hour in the dark and try to look at your fancy, artistic, very unique numbers. Not a fan. So uh, th think, about the, think about the scoring people. Uh, they, they definitely have a very uh, difficult job and uh, help them out with some good, clear, large numbers. They may go over uh, minimum required gear. Uh, I actually have a video on that. I wouldn't say my video is required gear, but uh, definitely uh, if you're starting out, just go ahead and um, cover everything up. And I'll put that link down in the description to take a look at 
uh, what I think is is kind of minimum minimum gear, and they may cover that in the meeting. So there is what you may get in a riders meeting, and uh, if you don't get all these things, you might want to ask if you're, if you're a first time racer. You may be asked to stay, and they may go over a couple of other uh, small small details to get you going. And uh, definitely remember, it's your first race. Take a deep breath, hydrate, relax, and have a good time. Thanks for watching.